I want to get to what we're watching on Tuesday night. But first, I want to get a couple questions for Donna and Chris. Donna, first, on that question I just posed to Mary Bruce. What, what, how big a margin do the Democrats need for Nancy Pelosi to be guaranteed that she'll be the speaker? First of all, Nancy Pelosi is probably one of the best whip counters in the Democratic caucus. So I wouldn't throw her under the bus right now because she knows how to win. She's raised over $130 million for Democrats across the country. One of the reasons why we have a diverse lineup of candidates is because Nancy Pelosi went out there and encouraged those candidates to run. So I see Nancy Pelosi, I mean, she's going to fight like hell. But there is a call for new blood, more people in the leadership. And just remember, George, 15 to 25 percent of those newly elected Democrats they will look for someone who can carry the mantle for them in 2020 and beyond. And Chris, for the White House, a house with subpoena power is a brand new ball game. Oh, yeah. Is the White House braced for that? Are they ready for it? Are they prepared? Well, they're getting a new White House counsel um, who you know, should be in place in time uh, for January. And, you know, if it's this Democratic House, it's very well could be their main job is going to be to a, be a subpoena processor over at the White House. And I think Mary was right, though, that there is real political risk in that as well. We saw that happen with um, the, the Republican House and Bill Clinton in the 90s. Um, you know, if you go too aggressive in that regard, it can be a backlash against those people. So I, that's why I think, and by the way, every dollar I have in my pocket, if they win the House, Nancy Pelosi is going to be Speaker. Sharpest elbows best counter. She is going to be the speaker. Everything else is pretend. We are all going to be here on Tuesday night. I want to get everybody's take on what they're going to be watching for. Martha, let me start with you. What's the big thing you're going to be watching Tuesday night? Well, I, I think I'm even going beyond Tuesday night. I think one of the things we watch Tuesday night is not whether the Democrats gain control of the House, but it's also how people campaign and what this has meant about these incendiary ads. That's a lesson that everybody will learn going forward, not just to 2020, but beyond. Is, is this the kind of fear-mongering that works? If it does, you'll see a lot more of it. John Carl. I'm going to be watching Pennsylvania. Polls close at 8 o'clock, so we'll see relatively early. Trump won the state by 44,000 votes. It was a key reason that he is president. And the, de and the Republicans could lose up to eight seats in the state of Pennsylvania. They're almost certain to lose two because of redistricting. How they do between that margin, I think, will determine largely where we go in the rest on the of the house. country. I've got my eyes on the suburbs all around this country, looking at places like the 7th Congressional District in Virginia, where you've got a female newcomer, Abigail Spanberger, running a, looking to unseat a third-term Republican there. Will there be a so-called pink way with someone like this ushering out a Trump supporter in a, in a Trump district? We will see. Matthew Dow. I'm watching independence, um, at, and that's going to determine who wins this in all of the races across the country. It's why Donald Trump's president of the United States. And a specific race that I think people should be aware of is the Beto O'Rourke Ted Cruz race in Texas. That race is a lot closer than people think. And I talked to a number of Republicans over the last 48 hours. They're very concerned. The first time they've been concerned that they could possibly lose a statewide race in Texas in 20 years. Well, this years. gives us an opportunity to talk about the early vote. Just saw this come in overnight already. More people have voted in the state of Texas, what, we're two days out from the right. vote, than voted in the entire, entire 2014. 2014. And they're thinking that there's going to be more than 7 million people vote in this election in Texas, which is almost a presidential year election return. And most of the growth in those, uh, those is new people, young people, and Latinos. Better O'Rourke wins in Texas. He's automatically near the top he's, of the pack for 2020. He's already a rock star. He becomes the biggest rock star in the country. Donna Brazil. Uh, of course, I'm looking at the Oprah effect. I'm watching <laughs> Georgia. It's on my mind as a daughter of the South. I'm very proud of Stacey Abrams, the kind of campaign that she's run. She's finishing up her campaign on education. I want to see her win. I want to see her win decisively. And I'm also watching the other states as well, including Florida. There's another, there's a, an, another race in Georgia, though. If, if Stacey Abrams does well, first of all, we should say that if neither she nor Brian Kemp get 50 percent, there's a runoff, That's a runoff. In, in, in the state of Georgia. Secondly, does she have the strength to carry in Lucy McBath, another key Senate race? I think in, so if you look at race. oh absolutely look she has done something that i think democrats should have done a long time ago that is she's expanded the electorate she has campaigned in rural areas like doug wilder who won back in 1989 stacy abrams understood that in order to win you had to bring a new energy in the party and she's done that um florida and wisconsin as i said before are going to be key to watch and on who's had a good night and a bad night from the parties if you see the Oklahoma governorship go to the Democrats, mm -hmm. it's going to be a very bad night for Republicans. If you see the United States Senate seat in New Jersey 
go to the Republicans, it's going to be a very bad night for Senate Democrats. And, and Nate Silver, you're going to be adjusting your forecast all through the evening as we get real results uh, coming in. Give us a sense of what you're going to be keeping an eye on early in the night. So to me, you have a two-part election. You have the North and the South. Um, we expect that Democrats are going to gain a lot of seats here in the Northeast, in Pennsylvania, for example. We expect they'll do very well in governorships in the, in the Midwest. If they're going to have a really good night or really put the Senate in play, they're going to have to win places in the South. They're going to have to win Tennessee or Texas, at least one of those probably. They're going to have to hold in Florida. They're going to have to put these suburban Atlanta districts in play in the House. That's when you get a margin that might win. 35 or 40, and where the Senate might actually get interesting. It might be because of a race like Texas. Uh, Rick Klein, you're going to be behind the scenes on, on Tuesday night, and we have all are trying to learn the lessons of the last uh, couple elections as we forecast on Tuesday night, as we cover the races on Tuesday. We've had some bad exit polls, the 2004 election, 2016 as well. Talk about how we're going to communicate uh, with voters last, during the night and, and with our decision desk. We don't know what we don't know, and we're going to be as transparent as possible about why we're not comfortable on a particular race. We're going to prov provide information throughout the night about where vote is still outstanding, where things look, relying on everyone here on this set and beyond to try to convey the true uncertainty and unprecedented election. John Carr, you've said several times we have to be prepared to be surprised on Tuesday. Yeah, I will be surprised if I'm not surprised. George, and, and I could see, getting to, to Nate's range of events, I could see us being surprised by a much bigger uh, blue wave than, than, than we've anticipated. I, could, I would also uh, not be surprised if we see the Republicans do surprisingly well. I mean, we just don't know. It's so much harder to poll in, in a midterm election. It's so much harder to poll in these House races. We just don't know. And the intensity is so high, that also adds to the uncertainty. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.